All right, welcome back to Above the Line versus Below the Line. I'm Matthew Shuckman. And I'm Victoria Negri. And uh, we decided uh, we're going to take a little time to talk about with the, with the Academy Awards happening this Sunday. We thought we'd go back and talk about uh, a film that was, you know, much loved throughout the year and, and, and hopefully will do well during award season, which is Promising Young Woman. Yeah, um, so Promising Young Woman is by writer-director Emerald Fennell, who I know, I think this is her directorial debut. Yeah, I believe so. Correct. Yeah. And she's um, been a writer on a lot of different projects, but um, it stars Carrie Mulligan, who is uh, a woman who we we watch her. It's basically a revenge thriller film where she is essentially getting revenge on men for doing uh, uh, something that happened to a friend of hers. Uh, so she goes into these clubs and she ends up uh, pretending to be drunk and lures these guys into her home and puts them in situations where maybe they might do something that they uh may regret down the line um yes. so yeah it, it plays on that that uh scenario that we we talk a lot about nowadays uh with the me too movement and such and stuff that unfortunately happens way too often in real life yeah yeah um, but yeah, what really surprised me about this film was the, the production design. Uh, okay. Considering what it's about, it's like very bubblegum, um, colorful. Uh, I loved the costumes. I thought that that was like, uh, it was all really refreshing to me to see that playful aspect of it. And I would have loved that kind of stuff to come through even more in, in the film itself for it mm. to be a little, a little more playful. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think what's interesting too, and it's because I'm definitely the type of person that I definitely like the movie. Um, and I think for everything it's trying to say and everything it's doing, it, it's, it's a plus, but I felt it was actually, I, I wouldn't consider it an amazing movie. I think just mm -hmm. on a lot of surface levels, it's just like, you know, great story great way of telling it but you know in the same breath it's nothing revolutionary as far as filmmaking goes mm -hmm. and what I found interesting about it I did find a lot of the tone a little too uneven specifically when you get to the end um and I thought those th those I get the point but I think the over hamminess of the frat boys just didn't fit in too much because when it starts to get you know especially really serious at that point they're still playing it for that kind of like almost like cliche joke version of those characters. And it just, it didn't feel right for me somehow. Yeah. I think I, I, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I think some of the characters to me were a little confusing. Like I wasn't sure, like she still lived at home, but uh, how old was she and what did that mean? And some of the characters that she brought home, I was like, well, what, what's going on here exactly with these people um yeah the ending I I I, I was just thinking about this before we hopped on mm. I kind of only want to talk about the ending <laughs> but then it like but then it like spoils everything for people because what's so interesting about this film is, to me is how it's trying to completely subvert uh revenge thrillers yeah. in the way it, it it ends which I'm so torn about I, I feel like it, it has to end the way it ended but, well, yeah what do you think i mean it's not it's not so i'm i appreciate actually and I, I told this i actually i watched this with my girlfriend i told it to her the minute we finished watching it is like because i appreciate the fact that again i won't go with the exact spoiler though i think most people <laughs> have seen it by now but what happened to her specifically i'm glad they went that route because i think a lot of other films wouldn't go that route and i appreciate when a filmmaker is willing to do that um yeah. but in the same breath what well, you were talking earlier to like understanding characters like the whole thing with the dean of the school i can understand what she's doing and the dean's reaction but i don't understand how the dean just didn't automatically call the police yeah yeah so basically to set to set up people up listening and watching this um what happens is carrie mulligan's character goes in to threaten the dean and say like i i know where your daughter is to get information and it's like a blackmail scenario with the dean's daughter. Yeah, the and dean of, of the school she went to where the situation that kind of kicked off her right. personality starts, yeah. 
Yeah, and so the dean could have easily just, yeah, called security or the cops or something. I think, yeah, there's a lot of things that we just kind of, uh, I think, the filmmakers hope that we let go of in yeah. following in following the characters, the characters' journey. Um, that's definitely one of them. I thought that when watching it too, I was like, if it's your kid, wouldn't you do anything to? protect her and yeah. stop this clearly unhinged woman. <laughs> I mean, there's, I mean, there are, there are other balances too, where like, again, going back to her home life, I love Jennifer Coolidge and Clancy Brown as her parents. And yeah. the idea that they're kind of just hoping things will change for her, but not really understanding it or being open enough to talk to her about it in a, an adult manner, I thought is much more prescient for what probably goes on in a lot of home lives with, certain things going on, depending whether it's mental health or, you know, situations that people just don't want to deal with on face value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think a lot of it, when, when you start to break down this movie and talk about it, it's so heavy and depressing that that's why I really appreciated the production design and wardrobe and, and, and things like that, because certain things uh, lift, um, lift you out of how awful this movie is i mean going back to the end <laughs> going back in the themes and what it's about like going back to the ending yeah. what happens to her i think has to happen because this movie is all about the fact that like she when you are uh, a victim to something like what she uh, and the character her her friend uh, she goes through because her friend goes through it yeah. um there's no coming back from that like you are in a sense like a version of you is dead so thinking about that, I'm like, God, this movie is dark um, other than, you know, what we see on the screen, like the themes of it are very dark. So I, I did appreciate like having those actors like Jennifer Coolidge, the production design, um, uh, Laverne Cox. Mm, yeah, um, th there were good, much needed moments of levity um, that I found. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I also this is not necessarily a thing that I said should be changed, I guess, but, you know, I, I, I try to go into everything, not knowing anything about the film as best I can. And with Promising Young Woman, I kind of had an idea, but I didn't know. I still went in thinking, and it's given away fairly, fairly early, so I don't think it's anything spoilerish, but I did go in thinking I was going to be watching a, a movie about somebody who does actually commit murders. Mm-hmm. And I kind of almost hope, though, that maybe they drag us along a little bit more before giving away the fact that that's not the case, because that's given away in the first, you know, 12, 15 minutes almost, that that's not the case. I would have been interesting to see play that, like, is it or isn't it kind of scenario. Yeah, like, what is the form that her revenge takes? Like, yeah. to maybe hold back those first few times that she brings a guy home, maybe to show her coming home and we don't know what happened and we just see her parents being suspicious of something and her friends like seeing how she's really different than other people um yeah I think that that's a good idea um yeah I didn't really know what it was about either I had only watched the trailer I saw it a while ago sorry oh somebody's motor, zooming by <laughs> motorcycle I live on a loud street in Brooklyn um yeah they're very excited about promising young woman here um yeah so I watched it I watched it a while ago and didn't uh on a screener and didn't uh didn't know much about it um I felt like oh this will be a modern kill bill or mm. an updated kill bill with like a female revenge fantasy thing and I thought that what was interesting about it was that the stuff didn't even directly happen to her it was her friend yeah absolutely um, well yeah it's it's funny too because as much as I didn't fully know everything about the film I actually had the opportunity because this 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 was supposed to come out a long time ago of course with 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 COVID and everything out things changed and I was supposed to see it with another colleague like way early in 2019 actually um, and I, I couldn't make it to the screening. And I wondered what I would have thought though, going into it then, not knowing anything about it and not having any background period, if I would have felt a little different. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I just knew people were having very strong reactions also. So I, I was prepared for some shocking things. I just weren't, I wasn't sure what, what those shocking things um, would be. 
Yeah. But yeah, I really wonder like how it would be different if it was her directly affected by the circumstance that her friend went through. Yeah, I mean, there's there's only so much I could speak to from people I know who have gone through some stuff and I'm not gonna bring it up because that's not my place. But uh, it, it's interesting to know how they felt about it. And I haven't, I haven't talked to them yet and I, and I should. Yeah, just even from like, you know, the film make, a filmmaking perspective of if you're, if to make it much more direct, if the protagonist directly experienced the thing that they're seeking their revenge on versus avenging a, a, a lover or a friend or a relative, um, it kind of changes it. So I wonder what that choice was with her when she was mm. making this movie. I, I, yeah, I wonder how it would change it. But it's well, an interesting what, choice. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, th- there's a lot that that I'm sure also if we, if we dig down into interviews, we can find out more. But those are the kind of things I kind of stay away from from a little bit until I've digested a Me film too. for a long time. And then I'll go back and find out later. Yeah, yeah. What would you what would you say if you if you had to go give, give it that letter grade? What would you give it? Uh, I think I would give it an A. I really, I, I, I really liked it. Um, not an A plus. I don't think it's the most amazing thing ever. Maybe A minus. Hmm. A maybe A minus. Um, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. I thought like it made me very uncomfortable, which I know it was trying to do, and it's yeah, it's it succeeded in uh, the kind of film it is. Yeah, I mean, I definitely. I mean, and I, I don't know if I said this before, but I, it takes a lot to impress me. Even if I yeah. like something a lot, <laughs> even if I think of something's a great movie, I, I, I'm, I'm one of those people like who hardly gives out high grades. I probably go B minus only because I, I felt some uneven tones a little too much, especially toward that end there, um, where again, where I agree with where it went, but the, the tonality of it just kind of really threw me for a loop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it was, it was good to talk to you about it. And uh, I look forward to talking to you uh, more about other films in the future. Thank you for joining us for Above the Line versus Below the Line. I'm Matthew Shuckman. Thanks. I'm Victoria Negri. Join us next time. Yeah. Talk to you soon.